How we doing, everybody? Hope we're all well. Daniel Cooper, just want to say I had a great time at Tales from the Octagon. You were all very nice. Well, thank you, Daniel Cooper. That is very, very nice. Hope you're all well. UFC 298 last night. What an incredible event that was from start to finish. Daniel Cooper again says she feels bad for Volk. Me too. Me too, Danielle. It was so sad to see. It really was. I mean, Volkanovsky, just an utter true legend of the sport. Just an awesome human being. Absolute gentleman. Nice guy. Humble. Funny. Doesn't take himself too serious. Good family man. But sadly, this is the game. This is the game. And also the game that we're going to be doing is this. World Championship Sumo. We're going to be doing that today as well. So... Let me take these ibuprofen. I've got a bit of a headache today. I'm not going to lie, everybody in the Bisping household is uh, very, very sick, which is a bit of a nightmare. But uh, hold on, let me just make this a bit bigger there. Hold on. Even bigger. Oh, well, no, that ain't working. We'll put that there. Uh, so, so we'll get to that stuff in a minute. I'm going to be answering your questions as well. Uh, so, yeah. So, Sunday, the morning after... The night before. <laughs> uh, incredible event at, at, um, in Anaheim, UFC 298. Absolute privilege to be commentating with uh, John Anik and Joe Rogan. You know, the uh, the best in the business. Uh, let's have a look here. We've got a little little speech going on here. A little bit was tough in the beginning. Really Mongolians. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I'll answer some of your questions here first. What's with the lame UFC 300 announcement? Lame? What are you talking about? You know, it's just on trend, isn't it, to just bitch about the UFC? Because that fight card at UFC 300 is ridiculous. Alex Pereira announces the main event. He's one of the most exciting guys we've ever seen in the sport. He's a two-weight division champion. He's beaten four former champions. And he's done it in a very short period of time. And Jamal Hill, Jamal Hill, super exciting as well. Then you combine that with the strawweight title, the BMF title. So there's three belts on the line. And then a load of other champions all on the card as well. You know, you guys are bloody hard to please. That's for damn sure. Anyway, um, when did I start watching sumo? Well, this stuff here, this combat sumo, it's pretty fun to be honest. And... Uh, Jump. Yeah, it's going to be a good one, Madison. So, they both yeah, look like absolute it. units. Look at the muscles on their shoulders here. I mean, that's about the weight of my head on both of their shoulders. <laughs> that's a trap routine, probably forged by Arnold so, Schwarzenegger, um, if I had to where guess. Was that? We'll, we'll you know, we talked that about Islam Ibrahim not having... Mute that. So, it's going to be an epic card. Correct, it is. Um, so, so, Volkanovsky, such a shame. As I say, such a likable human being. You know, it's just a bloody good dude is what he is. Uh, but that's the game. That's the game, mixed martial arts. It's a tough sport. It's a nasty business. Um, you go up and then you come down. You climb the mountain. You work hard. You hit the peak. You try and stay at the peak for a long time. Listen, Volkanovski, I think he defended the belt five times. He defended the belt five times. There's a newer generation coming through. And there's someone coming through here on Sumo. Let's have a little listen to this for a minute. Tonight, standing in front of him, Islam Ibrahim, the E-Train himself. Islam probably the physically Ibrahim. most intimidating man on the Doyo. Tasted defeat that the debut, but in the following weeks, he has studied the craft, Madison. Jesus Quiet, physically intimidating indeed. Islam Ibrahim, the E-Train. Another big old boy, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, yeah, uh, somebody says there, who is that? Rainer says, MMA is cruel. Yeah, exactly. It is. It's a tough sport, you know. Uh, Taporia is incredible. What are you going to say? Taporia is incredible. I said this a couple of times this week. It definitely had shades of Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo. Number one in terms of the confidence from the contender. Uh, as you know, McGregor gave him no respect whatsoever. That was kind of the case with Taporia saying he was going to finish him in round one. Everyone thought he was crazy. I thought he was, you know, discrediting Volkanovski in the career that he had, but he believed in himself. Look at that dude there, 360 pounds. Jesus Christ. Ahem. So I, I did one of these sumos before. I called one of the guys Big Belly Barry. He's not a Big Belly Barry. He's not either. 109 pounds at a Montura, Egypt. The great Sandstorm Egypt. Club Sumo 2 champion, Osuna! Yeah, that's right.
Spooky Zen said the place looks looks packed. It does. Absolutely bloody packed. Who would have thunk it, eh? Sumo taking off like this. So anyway, we're going to be watching the sumo and we're going to be watching, uh, sorry, talking about UFC 298 along the way. Cringella is a Corny McGregor wannabe. No, he's not. He's not a Corny McGregor wannabe. I think you're talking about Tuporia. Look at these fellas. What do we think? What do we think? Purple shorts? Or that monster of a human being? He hasn't got purple shorts, but he's got a purple sash. Purple sash or black sash? I'm going to say Black Sash. Tubby. Ah, they're big dudes, man. They're big dudes. I wouldn't necessarily say Tubby. All right, listen. Yeah, there's a bit of flab on there, but they're big, big, strong fellas. They will throw you around like crazy. So here's a good question. Sangra and... Oh, purple's off. Purple is off. Where was that? Hold on a minute. Hold on, get my thing over here. Where was it? Uh, someone said, what's next for Triple C? Sangra is ra is raro. What's next for Triple C? Well, he says that he's disqualified, uh, sorry, uh, retired now. And I'll tell you what, Purple Sash, oh, he won. Tossed him out. Purple tossed him out. Uh, so Triple C says that he's probably going to retire. I don't know if he needs to retire. You know, he had a very good fight against uh, Marab Davalishvili. That was super entertaining. And he had a really close fight, a split decision against Aljamain Sterling. But he's not interested in being anything other than a champion, which I do respect because a lot of people are happy to make a living, happy to be a part of the show. It's fun. It's challenging. It's rewarding. Obviously, you make a great living. Uh, but Henry's not interested in that one little bit. Only wants to be a champion. As I say, you got to respect that because uh, he could just keep taking paydays for a while. I guarantee... So who does a bit of a draw? Um, but that's up to him. That's really cornrows. There you go. Thank you, Love Fist. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. Cornrows. Can you imagine me in cornrows? My God. Uh, anyway, black shorts. Uh, do you think that Ilya would compete against Yair? Or how do I think he would compete? I think he'd do great. I don't see how you can doubt Taporia against anybody. Let's be honest. I mean, last night against Volk, all we saw was the boxing. That's all we saw. We saw in the feature that the UFC did, those amazing features, by the way, where they went to Spain, had an entire bull ring and, you know, did a whole, like, backstory on his history of mixed martial arts and combat training. The man's been bloody doing uh, wrestling since, what, about four years old? Black belt in jiu-jitsu, beautiful striking. So, Taporia is absolutely the real deal. And Rogan was talking about this last night and he had a great point. This is like the next generation. And as you know, uh, as you may know, I work for TNT Sports or we used to call it BT Sport in the UK. We were talking about this on there today as well. We did a little pulse fight show. This is like the next generation. I mean, look at Ian Gary. Look at Ilya Taporia. Nick Peter, who I worked with, he was saying that these, these are people that were inspired by Conor McGregor. If you think back to 2015, when McGregor knocked out uh, Josie Aldo, crazily enough, that's almost nine years ago. Nine years ago, Tapori is 27. He would have been 18 years old sitting there watching that. Bispin, I've been training Muay Thai for three months, but I want to do MMA. Should I take a smoker like my coach wants or start jiu-jitsu and other training for MMA? We should do both, Le Poncho. You should do both. You need to do a smoker. If you're planning on fighting, you've got to do a smoker. Simple as that. But if you're planning on fighting, you've got to do some jiu-jitsu and train MMA in general. You can't just go right into it just because you've done some mixed martial arts. Bro, you're going to get cooked. Simple as that. <clears throat> so we're a little bit sick in this house here today. Rebecca, my wife, Rebecca, she's sick as a dog. I'm not feeling too great, if I'm honest. Uh, Bispin will be competing in sumo at the rate that he's gaining weight. Jesus Christ. No man alive should have to put up with such kind of abuse. You cheeky bastard. Anyway, so. Um, let me see. Taporia. Unreal. Volkanovsky. The talk is, well, he's saying he wants an immediate rematch. I mean, the reality is, oh, we've got a, we got a, got a member, Terry Baylor, member for 19 months. I had Ian winning last night, but damn, it was close. Mad props to Wesley Snipes, Jeff Neal. Yeah, I'll give, a, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, what was I just talking about there? Bloody ADD, I'm all over the place. 
What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Volkanovski. So Volkanovski said he wants to rematch to Poria in Spain. I mean, listen, I'd see it. I'd watch it. And more than likely, given his resume and what he's done in the sport, he deserves it. But is it the smart thing? Probably not. He just got, and I don't like saying this, he just got knocked out in a bad fashion. Prior to that, he was TKO'd against Islam. Um, he beat Yair Rodriguez in very dominant fashion in round two or three, I think. And before that, he lost to Islam. So he's lost three out of his last four. But more importantly, the point that I'm making is that he's lost his last two by being finished. He's 35 years old. That was a nasty knockout at the weekend. I would suggest taking some time off. But he is 35. I still think he could probably take nine months off, come back at 36 and get a rematch with Ilya. Um, that would be my advice. He doesn't need to retire. He's only 35. It's not like he's 45. That would be crazy, right? He's 35. So take a little bit of time off. Rest the body. I think he's had four fights in a very short period of time. 15 months, something like that. So rest the body. Rest the mind. Take a break. Forget about mixed martial arts. Get that hunger and come back. Um, in the meantime, maybe Ilya could defend against Yair Rodriguez or Brian Ortega, depending on who wins that next week. We've got some more members coming in. Patrick Fleming, what's up, buddy? And we also got Terry Bailey, said that one before. I'm a doctor. I can pursue part-time career as an MMA fighter. Can I pursue a part-time career as an MMA fighter? I am a bodybuilder. 260, bro. What's that guy called? Bradley Martin. Just because you're a bodybuilder doesn't mean shit. Does not mean shit. These guys here on Sumo, they'd smash you as a bodybuilder. They've got more combat than you. You probably gas really quick. Big muscles don't mean shit. Big muscles, a lot of the time, mean a small dick. <laughs> no, but a lot of the time, uh, big, just because you've got big muscles or you're bodybuilding doesn't mean anything. You know, you've got to train martial arts, simple as that. Um, we've got a semi final here. Brendan Moorefield taking on Mohamed Kalal, the black horse. This is the quarter final. Uh, we'll watch this one in a minute when it starts. Uh, what do I think of Oban's debut? So Johnny Elias is talking about Oban Elliott fighting out of Wales. He had a fight on the Contender Series last year, which was brilliant. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, last night he took on Val Woodburn. You probably saw it on the prelims. If he didn't, Val Woodburn was the guy that stepped up on a few days' notice against uh, Bo Nickel. Obviously, that didn't go his way. Bo Nickel's ridiculous. Uh, last night they had a great fight Oban Elliott started fighting out of Wales by the way shout out the Wales um, threw a beautiful head kick almost knocked him out and then got dropped very very exciting fight I think Oban Elliott's going to go far mate I really really do Bisping would you smart these guys let's have a look at them <laughs> not in sumo mate definitely not not in sumo shall we have a listen to the production values for that match and now, ladies and gentlemen, here is his opponent, Brennan Moorfield. Brennan Moorfield, let's go. Uh, so, do I miss the UK, Michael? Yeah, of course. Of course I do. I'm lucky I still get to go back. Obviously, there's normally a UFC event once or twice a year. I go back for that. I go back at Christmas when I can. I always try as many times as possible to go back. But we have a good life out here. In America, I'm not going to lie, you know. Of course, miss the people, the sense of humor and stuff like that, but we have a great life and I got a good thing going on. So, yeah, I, I miss the people more than the place. I don't miss the weather. That's for damn sure. Uh, should have got you instead of McGregor for Roadhouse. It looks like shit. Uh, well, we don't know, mate. You can't base that off just a trailer, can you? Might be fantastic. Should we have a little listen on this? See what the sumo guys are saying? Let's have a listen. From Orlando, Florida, Brennan Moorfield. Do I own a gun? Come by my house. The Come in the try me, brother. Begins. Your referee is Ronnie. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, we, we got a gun. We did. We got to. We had to do it, man. Everyone else has got a gun. Uh, let's have a look. Do you think Volk should take at least at least six months off? I do. I just said that earlier, mate. Florida man, how would Prime McGregor do it? 145 pounds against Taporia. See, that'd be phenomenal, wouldn't it? Could you imagine McGregor in his heyday, in his prime? Look at these two. Let's have a look. 
Boom, down he goes. Nice, quick work. Um, McGregor, prime, against Taporia. Whoa, that'd be one of the best fights you'd ever see. I am really a fan of Taporia. I really am. As much as I love Volk, and as, as sad as that was last night, you got to admire what Taporia did. It really was phenomenal. Um, let's go back to the full screen just for a second. In fact, no, let's have a look. Let's keep it going. Uh, the co-main event as well, we never talked about that yet. The co-main event, um, Robert Whittaker, Paolo Costa, just phenomenal. Robert Whittaker's some man. He really is. Hold on, let's Good listen. Job getting the underhook, but like you said, he turned a wrong angle. He was unable to get his balance back, and Muhammad was able to shove him out. Just too easy. Yeah, Whittaker, unreal. I mean, the way he got rocked at the end of round one with that spinning wheel kick from Costa uh, and his recovery skills to come back in round two and three and, and still win the fight. A close fight. I had Robert winning it. I thought Robert is so skilled, really, really skilled. Uh, and he's a hell of a fighter. When I say fighter, I don't mean the skills. I mean, in here, his heart, his determination, what he brings to the table, man. The skills are one thing, but his heart and mind are absolutely phenomenal. I'm a big fan of Robert Whittaker, for damn sure. Is there any truth to a UFC Seattle event? Zoltan, I have no idea, mate. No idea. First I've heard, anyway, I'll, I'll say that. Mike, what year did you feel that I was at my best? What year... I don't know, mate. I don't know. It all seems like a long time ago now, to be honest. I mean, the year I won the belt was 2016, but I did have one eye, you know? I think technically I was at my best there in terms of grappling and jujitsu and striking. The mind was at the best, but I did have one eye, so I was at a handicap. Um, thank, I love you as a commentator and a fighter. Well, thank you very much. Devin the Gardener. Sneako was robbed. He beat Strickland. <laughs> <laughs> Strickland, he's a maniac. Hey, fair play, though. That, that sneak out, he's a tough bastard. Didn't go down. Uh, Bisbee, how do you feel about the new up-and-coming British prospect, Enormous Tits? <laughs> weak, bro. That's weak. Costa didn't win the first lol. He got, landed a good kick at the end. Yeah, I know. Did I say that Costa won the first round? I didn't. I said Robert did well to recover from that. So stop trying to pick an argument that doesn't even exist. Um, all rounds were close. Every single round was close. Let's have a look at this one. Here we got we got Camille Bashi, Basira versus Fathi Abul Rakab. Where are they from? I'm not sure what that flag is. Is that Egypt? Is that Egypt? It might be. I'm only basing that on the fact that Mount he said Sinai, Egypt. We sent it Early. inside to Jessica. Costa won the first. Yeah, well, exactly. He might have won Newark, the first. New Jersey, how you feeling tonight? What was the most nerves before a fight? Hendo 2. You know, Hendo 2. Hendo 2 was a very nerve-wracking situation, of course, because I was defending the belt. I was defending it in pretty much my hometown, Manchester. And then also because, yeah, I'd been knocked out before. So there was a lot of... Um, there was a lot of psychological demons. And that's what I was talking about for Volkanovski last night, coming back to the octagon after you've been knocked out. Granted, it was a TKO. He didn't go to sleep, but it affects the mind. And now coming back against, uh, if he was to come right back against Taporia, getting knocked out twice in a row, that's really going to affect a fighter's confidence. Because, you know, without confidence, we're kind of screwed. Uh, anyway. Were you ever close to fighting Whitaker near the end? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, me, me and Whitaker, we, we were actually supposed to fight, but I got injured. I had to have surgery on my elbow. I had a few uh, loose pieces of bone fragments floating around, so my arm would lock up. So uh, so that never happened. Um, 370 pounds versus 225. Yeah, that's what this sumo wrestling is right now. Three but you know what, mate? Pyro what Egypt kind of stuff is that? Pimo, well, once again in the quarterfinals. Let me tell you this, though. I saw one, I did a stream a few weeks ago with this sumo stuff, and there was one, he was jacked, he was absolutely gigantic, and he got thrown around like a rag doll. So, don't judge a book by its cover, brother. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Count? Did you watch any of the one Muay Thai on Friday? I didn't, he fish. I didn't, mate, I didn't see that at all. Um, so, talking about Robert Whittaker, what does he do next? I think a logical matchup for Robert Whittaker would be 
Whitaker versus Sean Strickland. By all accounts, Izzy versus Drickus Duplessis is going to happen at some point, right? Not at UFC 300. Whitaker just got back in the conversation with that amazing performance. Sean Strickland's a former champion. They're both going to want to fight in the meantime of Drickus and Izzy, them two finally settling their differences inside the octagon. I think the perfect fight for those two, Sean Strickland, Robert Whitaker, the winner gets a title fight. Or what do you think? Am I off the mark there? I love your videos, Michael Hobby. Well, thank you, Kyle Bush. Mike, what's your thoughts on... Look at all those dudes I see at the bar at the, on the weekend. <laughs> I love how these guys look like the dudes at the bar. All right, well, that's Big Belly Barry. I don't know if it is Big Belly. He looks like Big Belly Barry. I think that might be him from the last one. That guy is much smaller, but the technique, brother. The technique. Ah, oh, there's my editor. Just put a poll up there. What's up, John? John Brannigan. He's the guy that makes all my videos look great, sound great. So a big thanks to John. All right, what do we think? Green sash or black sash? Green sash is bigger. Black sash is smaller. Fathy, I think I think that's Fathy. Yeah, with like the, the ponytail. We'll call him Fatty because it's right there. I mean, how could you not? How could you not call him Fatty? Taking on Fatter, Fatty and Fatter. Boom, off the pop. Fatty's got the underhook. Fatty's in the middle. Fatter working him backwards. See, look, like everyone said the bigger guy would have this, but this is actually a very, very close contest. Obviously, the natural advantages are on the side of the green sash. That natural body weight, gravity, helping out. Someone's got to make a move is correct. Boom! Fatty beats fatter. Told you. Do not judge a book by its cover. That's just round one, though. Uh, testing his cardio. Last night, you were really funny. Thank you very much. Why can't we see their cheeks? What, their butt cheeks? You want to see their butt cheeks? Go ahead. That was a nice little inside trip, actually. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, let me just get rid of this. Paul. Uh, hey, Mike, who would have won? Prime, Romero, or Musasi? See, that's a good fight. That is a good fight, buddy. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure because both of those guys in the prime were phenomenal. But Musasi, Musasi was something special. He really was. I feel like the most is rigged and for entertainment. What, this sumo stuff? I don't think so, mate. Why would they rig this? There's no need to rig it. Are you talking about the UFC? That's definitely not rigged at all. Let's go David Hay from Wish. <laughs> it is a little bit like a David Hay from Wish, isn't it? Oh, Lordy, I'm in stitches. So, uh, what else? Oh, Henry Cejudo and Marab Devalishvili. We've got to talk about this. And what a night for Georgia, the country, not the state. Unreal. Almost got two champions now. Ilya Taporia fighting out of Spain, born in Germany, but representing the country of Georgia. Now the champion of the world. Marab Devalishvili, close to being a champ. Here we go, round two. Fat has got him. Hold on, hold on. Fat is going to force him out. Cutting off the ring. Pushing him up against the fence. Oh, and there it is. The body weight, the gravity. Karate Kid, it's got a joke for me. It's Karate Kid 89 in the comments says, knock, knock. So I say, who's there? See what he comes back with, your bell end. Yo, Mike, prime John Jones or prime Bispin? <laughs> Come on, mate. Don't be silly. Listen, I would love to say me, but that'd just be a lie, wouldn't it? I'd have a go. I'd have a go. Definitely. You know what I mean? That's what fighters do. Bispin, will you continue to do acting? Yes, I will, yeah. 
I've got I've got actually something very very exciting that I'm not going to announce, but something good coming up soon. Something big. I'm excited, very very excited for it. But anyway, uh, Marab Davalishvili versus Henry Cejudo last night. He was just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I tell you what, Henry Cejudo showed up. He wasn't there for a paycheck. Let's have a listen here. Oh, false Hattie. start. Oh, false start. Jesus Christ. David Hay from Wish. Steady on, bro. We'll get. We'll, we'll come back to Marab Davalishvili in a minute. Call. Those the tension of, things, though, can of the you, sumo. That bull Rakab, now not only thinking about Bikini, That's how Marab was standing oh, last start night whilst choking as well. out. Right. Another oh. false start, this time on Big Chemo's part. False start, Big Chemo. That, there we go. We got his name. Big Chemo. How hard is it? Wait for start and go. The final matchup. I guess the sooner you get to the middle, it's advantageous. You know, because obviously the other person's closer to the very, very small circle. I wasn't at the rules meeting. Don't worry, we're going to get to Marab in a minute because I do want to talk about him and Cejudo, oh. but the tension of this match is killing center. Heavy clash. There we we go. get going. Kimo striking, pushing. Well, Fatih pushing, now taking the center, but he's eating the throat chops, the Madison. They did, both did a great job of exchanging push and oh. thrust there, and now they're working on the Mawashi, seeing that it wasn't working, working for either Mawashi. of them. Look at the angle that Fatih's trying to take, but Kimo leveraging the strength. Kimo taking center oh, stage. Oh, it looks like he's going to oh! and he does. There it is, there it is. No surprise. The big old boy pushes him out of the very small circle. Anyway, um, prime Lee Murray all Strickland. Lee Murray all day, bro. Lee Murray all day. He was a bad man. Anyway, Marab Davalishvili, Henry Cejudo. Um, unreal. Marab Davalishvili. There's a very good chance that this time next year he's the champion of the world. And I say that, Cash. Knock, knock, who's that? Cash. All right, great kid. It's a bit underwhelming, weren't it? Was that the best knock, knock joke you got? Especially when you, you, you're slipping me $2 for it. You could have given me a good little joke there. I was in the mood for a laugh. I mean, that's why I'm watching Sumo after all. Bet or not, here we go. Belt or not, we need to see Costa versus DDP in the future. Great style matchup. You know what, Vince? You're absolutely right. Paolo Costa has an incredible chin. As much as Robert Whittaker hit him, he didn't have a mark on him. He seems like he's built of titanium. Titanium shin bone. Um, he's got a hell of a chin. He can land some shots as well. I mean, those kicks that he was throwing at Robert Whittaker last night, they were just phenomenal. So him versus DDP, that would be what a matchup that would be. We'll give you a bit of full screen action for a minute. Any upcoming trips to Thailand planned? You trained at Kiat Kam Town. Yeah, yeah. When you go, come to Rajam Dandam Stadium and we will put you in the VIP if you want, brother. Well, thank you very much, Aran Sidi. I appreciate that. Yeah, I would love to come back to Thailand. I did train there. Where was it? What was it called? Ramkam Peng, I think it was where I stayed years ago. Um, yeah, love training in Thailand. And I love Thailand and people. I love the food. I love the people. I love everything about it. Anyway, um, where is the salt throwing of pro sumo? You're right. We need a bit of that, don't we? We do. Costa needs to work on his condition and check kicks. I, I, I disagree. I disagree. He did check quite a lot of kicks. Robert Whitaker's just really good at throwing those low calf kicks. There was a big old swole, swell, swollen lump on his leg. That's for damn sure. Um, his conditioning was good. Went three rounds well. What's my favourite cheese? Got to go with a bit of mature cheddar, McLaren 44. Am I a fan of bare knuckle FC? Um, yeah. The reason I hesitate, I've got nothing against it and I'm all for them. And I think God bless them all and they're all making money and they're entertaining fights. The only reason I hesitated is because I wouldn't say I'm a fan because I've never watched an event. I've, I've watched some of the big fights for sure. I love what Mike Perry's doing. Mike Perry's completely dominating that sport and there's been some tremendous matchups recently. But as I say, I wouldn't say I'm a fan because I've never actually sat down and watched a whole event. But I appreciate it big time. There's some some really, really good fights. And they've got some good names. Ian Gary Barlow. <laughs> Ian Gary Machado. What do we think about this guy, guys? What do we think? Let me know. I'm, look, I'm waiting for the comments, right? You got to say, he was bloody good. He was bloody good. 
Wasn't the slobber knocker that you were all probably looking for? Wasn't the blood and guts? No man alive. It wasn't, um, you know, two guys standing in the pocket and trading. But it was a very mature performance from Ian Gary. Now, Wildly, Widley says it was a lame fight. Um, yeah, it wasn't the most exciting fight. It wasn't. But he won. He's still undefeated against a very tough guy in uh, in uh, 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 Jeff Neal. You're supposed to... See, oh, right, right, okay. Karate Kid said, uh, who's there? He said, Cash. And I'm supposed to say, Cash who? And then he says, no, thanks. I prefer peanuts. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cash. Cashew. No, thanks. I prefer peanuts. I like it. I'm using it. I'm not going to lie. I will be using that one. Shout out to Isaac A. Deke. Watching in Norway. Well, Isaac A. Watching in Norway. Hope you're well, buddy. And I'm assuming that that's your father or your girlfriend or the little icon. I can't see if it's a man or a woman. Mike Sahudo gassed. He did a little bit. He slowed down. So Hudo definitely slowed down, that's for sure. Look at this, look at the production value on the sumo. Let's have a listen. Veteran of the game, fun fact, knows Islam Makachev and Habib Nurmagomedov oh. since they were kids. We got a daggy. Also fun fact, he was on two practice teams for the NFL, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the San Luis Rams. This guy's just elite. Everything he touches turns to gold. Let's call him Midas Gaglov. <laughs> what a guy. All right, all right, all right. So he's friends with uh, Khabib and Islam, the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars football team in Florida. Look at the knowledge. Look at the knowledge. Uh, Three battles will on. decide this quarterfinal, and the winner will advance. This is the quarterfinals, guys. On my left, weighing 325 pounds from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Oh. Introducing Kyle, the goon, the ferreter. The ferreter. Oh, brilliant. Love it. We got the ferreter, guys. That's a bad last His night. opponent across the doya weighing 300. And this is coming from somebody called Bisping. Melania Russia, Gaglov. our club sumo one champion, presenting Soslan Big Bear Gaglov. All right, so we got Gaglov versus the Ferret. Uh, this will be interesting. Uh, shout out to Isaac A. Deke watching in Norway. Did that already. It's cool to try and sport outside of Japan. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's and, and I'll tell you what, look at the crowd. A lot of people there. As someone said there, I said, how is this place absolutely packed? I don't know, but he, the ferreter, fighting out of USA, has a little look of a heavier Sergei Pavlovich, if you ask me. All right, so off the pop. Gaglov, got the underhooks with the right hand there. The ferret, holding firm, standing his ground, going nowhere. Let's listen to the commentary, because they'll do a better job than me. Depend on who takes the first step and, and disbalances themselves first, and it might be Kyle, based on... Saslan's uh, energy here. Gaglob is moving, testing, probing, trying to experiment. There's oh, the push. Oh, oh, there he is, the and oh. he's able to walk Kyle out. Great. 1 0 to Dagestan. The ferret was fed the floor. And that's alliteration for you. Brendan Fitzgerald will be proud of me. Guys sitting. Um, well, we'll go back to the questions while we just wait for a minute. Main event of UFC 300 was underwhelming. What do you want? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Granted, it wasn't like something unexpected in terms of like GSP taking on Anderson Silva when they both retired out of USADA. You know what I mean? But it, it's a bloody great fight and it's a fantastic fight card. Anyway. Um, yanted, yanted, yanide. Okay. Tales from the Octagon 3 at the Manchester Apollo 2024. My daughter brought, brought me, bought me a surprise ticks for my birthday. Well, yo, that's nice. God bless your daughter. Uh, great backflip, great night. Great to see Paul's backflip. Uh, yeah, Tales from the Octagon. I don't know. I would like to do it, for sure. I'll have to get in touch with the promoter, see if he wants to do it again. And if he doesn't want to do it, I'll just promote it myself. Uh, see, the, the Tales from the Octagon things, here we go again. Oh, they're both American. 
Just because he said he was mates with Khabib, I just assumed he was a Daggy. Daggy Stanny. Boom, there he goes. Soslan Gagloff getting the job done once again. The Ferreter, he's out. The Ferreter ate the A floor. game of leverage Fed that Soslan Gagloff will most likely always win. Here's the replay. Walk me through it, Madison. Yeah, as you, you can see, Soslan starts twisting him by the Mawashi, and there was just too much weight going that way. Kyle was only on one foot, Boom. and the next day. Got to be careful. You know, you can't drive forward too much, otherwise they use your own momentum and body weight against you. That's what martial arts is all about. That's what jiu-jitsu is all about. That's why they call it the gentle art. Anyway, uh, we'll go back to that in a minute. I'll give you a bit of full screen action. So what was I talking about? Early stoppage for Falk. Okay, okay. Uh, do you believe in a McGregor comeback? I, I, I honestly, I don't think I do, if I'm honest. McGregor doesn't need to come back, you know? And I think that's probably part of the delay. I mean, I have no idea why, why he's not, but he doesn't need to fight. He doesn't need the money. Simple as that, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, it requires a lot of discipline, dedication, and sacrifice to fight, to get through a training camp. And I tell you what, if I could be sitting on a Lamborghini yacht... <laughs> as opposed to getting people sweating on me and all that stuff and arm barred and tapped out and kicked to shit every day. I'd probably be in the gym because that sounds like a lot of fun and I do miss those days. So, Garn versus Aspinall. I'd like to see that one. I would like to see that one. So, so hold on a minute. Let's talk about this real quick. I'll give you a full screen. A lot of people saying that the main event was underwhelming. Would you have preferred Tom Aspinall versus Alex Pereira? Because I, I saw a lot of people getting excited for that one. Pereira versus Jamal Hill is a better fight. Tom Aspinall versus Alex Pereira is a complete mismatch. Complete mismatch. And that's with all the respect in the world to Alex Pereira. Tom's gigantic and he would just wrestle him, if not knock him out on the feet. So that is just a complete mismatch. Uh, Tom versus Cyril Garn, I'd love to see that as well. The problem for Cyril on that one would be the wrestling. On the feet, Cyril's smooth, man. He's, he's big, he's fast, he's powerful, he's agile. He's very, very good, but he's at a big deficit in terms of the wrestling. I mean, look at what John Jones did. But, um, but you never know. Only takes one in mixed martial arts. It's, is 28 too late to try and go pro MMA, in your opinion? Well, Jonathan Neal, no, it's not. And if you want to do it, give it a shot. Um, I'm not sure what your circumstances are. I don't know if you have any kind of background in mixed martial arts or combat or boxing or whatever. But you only get one life. I remember my dad... As for, I think this was on my documentary. It's true, I said it to him. Because I had the opportunity, somebody was going to train me to be a fighter and help me out a little bit financially back in the day. And um, my dad said, well, why do you want to do it? And I said, well, I don't want to be sitting there on a bar, sitting in a bar stool, talking to my mates when I'm 40, 50 years old, saying, what if I could have done this? I could have done that, but I didn't, you know? So 28, listen, it's not ideal. Not ideal, but two years of hard, solid training. You're 30 years old and you've got a good foundation. It all depends on you, mate. Can you fight? Can you fight? You know, you know deep inside yourself whether or not you can fight. You know whether or not you've got what it takes, whether you can compete, whether you can take a punch, unless you're delusional, which some people are, but generally people aren't. So ask yourself the question, do you really want to do it? Do you want to make the sacrifice? And if the answer to all those things is yes, then good luck, my brother. Lil Lou, have you ever thought about collaborating with a brewery or even creating your own distillery in the near future? And will you be commentating big pay-per-views in the future as well? Well, I have not thought about collaborating with a brewery. I would like to collaborate with a brewery. Are you offering? Um, I would love to create my own distillery. Absolutely, I would. And I would love to partner with a nice beer company. Absolutely, I would. And will I be commentating big pay-per-views in the future? I would love to, but of course that job belongs to Daniel Cormier. Um, oh, some big old boys walking out here. DC, John Anik, Joe Rogan, of course. They do the pay-per-views. Last night, DC had an obligation that he had to attend. So, so uh, I was lucky enough to fill in. 
I was lucky enough to fill in. It's an absolute pleasure commentating those big pay-per-views. You really feel the difference. Let's just have a listen here. That here, but he's got you through. Ten's in first. Let's take it to Jack. Um, yeah, the energy in the building last night was incredible. Obviously, we've got big title fights on, a lot of star power in the octagon and around the arena. Last night, you got Mark Zuckerberg there, amongst many, many others. I'm terrible with celebrities. I recognize the faces. I don't know the names. I saw a lot of very recognizable people last night. A lot of people that I've seen before, but I don't know who they are. So a lot of celebs in the building last night. A lot of great fighters inside the octagon. The fans were incredible. The energy was amazing. And of course, it was in Anaheim, California, which is 15 minutes away from where I live. So it was great. Rebecca came. Uh, Lucas and Ellie came. Ellie's boyfriend came. So I got them tickets. UFC hooked them up with some great seats. Uh, they came and watched the fights, commentated. Got a little, um, went and had some food. Got a little meal on the way home. Just caught the final hour. There's a little restaurant. It's called BJ's. It's a very, very casual, like, dining place. So Sorry, pizza place. Nothing fancy at all. Only place that was open. But it's kind of what we wanted anyway. Just a nice bit of comfort food. Had a bit of pizza. And off to bed. And then I was up this morning doing a post show for TNT Sports. All right, this guy's a bit smaller, isn't it? Let's have a listen, though. Let's have a listen. Inside the we'll go back to the questions center. in a minute. A little bit tighter odds here for the Sandstorm. All right. Arashi in the purple. Plus 1,000 on the Zaya the in the white. Big size. Boom. Oh, look at the arms and strength of one Osuna. One under here. Boom. And he's able easy, to walk. Easy, easy work. Gunbot out. Throws him out the ring. Uh, but yeah, no, no, no. Last night was amazing. Really was. Uh, so I would like to do more pay-per-views. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Obviously, I don't make those decisions. Everybody wants to do the pay-per-views. Of course they do. All right, so Vince, belt or not, we need to see Costa. We did that one. Thank you very much. Alberto, thank you, buddy. Uh, and that is the same one from Lil Lou twice. BJ's, of course. Mikey B is the king. <laughs> BJ's, you idiots. BJ's. Pizza and Brew House, I think it's called. Uh, Michael Bisping, do you agree that Volk won the fight? Yeah, your mom's house, the best. Weird. Purple Sash thrown down. Nice. Nice word by, what's his name? Yaya, I think. Let's have a listen. Nice word by Yaya. Nice little throw. Throwing the big man. That, see, that's the thing. You can't push too hard, but of course you want to push your opponent out of the, 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 the rope, the ring, the circle. Let's have a look. Boom. Uses the energy against him. Okay. Very, very nice. He's been the last 17 years. Yeah, we're definitely keeping him on the stage <laughs> because he is... Anyway, back to the question before the next round starts. 100 hand slap is needed. Capcom so <laughs> It is. The 100 hand slap. E Honda. E Honda. This guy. I love a bit of E Honda. And the bear hug. <laughs> and the flying headbutt that he used to do. I love Street Fighter 2. What a game. All right, the third and final. The one apiece going into this one. Let's have the commentary from... Benson. The sumo. Playing not. some mind games here. Zaya I mean, he is not thrown off at Arashi. all. Not at all. He's been there. He, he wrestled professional sumo in Japan for six years, starting at just 19 years old. So he's walked the walk and talked the talk himself. These are, these are two incredible athletes that we're looking at right now. 43 years young. Tenzin right. trying to upset the sandstorm. Gets an underhook. Oh! oh but the sandstorm gets heavy on that head and is able to turn gun. Blew it. Blew it. Got too aggressive. Nice work there by uh, Street Fighter 6. He's so good. Yeah, it's Callum was saying that. My boy, obviously. I got to get it. Michael was at your London show. It was awesome. Thank you, AIO2. I appreciate that. The London one wasn't as good as Manchester. I apologize. But obviously, I'm not a bloody uh, polished uh, stage performer like that. But So I had a good run through on Saturday. Sorry, on Thursday in the London one. So by the time we, got, we did Manchester, it was just better. And I edited a few bits out, cut a few bits out, made it a little bit shorter. Um, e Honda versus Zangief. Zangief. Oh, he was the one that spun around like the wrestler, weren't it? Um, yeah. Darude. Oh, Vandalay Silva. Vandalay Silva. Any Vandalay Silva fans in here? Let's test your knowledge. See if you are old school MMA. Would I fight Sean Strickland? I've fought Sean Strickland. That is Theo the Great. I've fought Sean Strickland many times. 
I have sparred many, many rounds with Sean. Good times. You know, he was a good training partner to have around. Um, so the answer is, I, if I was still fighting, of course I would. Of course I would. Bisping, you're such a lovely guy. I feel happy see, seeing you and hearing you commentating on fights. Thank you. Do you think Robert Whittaker could be the future champion? What do you think of his performance? I think Robert Whittaker's pound for pound one of the best fighters in mixed martial arts. I think he's certainly one of the most skilled in middleweight. I think he hits like a beast. He's got a great chin. He's got an amazing gas tank, fantastic skill set. Hits hard. He's the real deal, man. Robert Whittaker is, is the real deal. He's already been the champion. Of course, uh, Izzy was the long-time champ. He lost twice to Izzy. No shame in that. The second fight, he did really well. Um, can he become the champion again? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Izzy isn't the champ. Perhaps stylistically, Izzy just had something, you know, uh, uh, it was the code that he couldn't crack with Izzy. Maybe. Styles make fights. Maybe he could beat Drickus in the rematch. We saw what happened the first time. But you know what? So here's, here's what Robert was saying to me, and I was trying to elaborate on this last night. We'll go back to Anderson's, uh, sorry, Vandalay Silver in a minute. Um, Robert was saying, as he was getting longer in his career, he was focusing on focusing on being too technical and kind of moved away from the fighting side of things. And I do know what he means. When I first started doing MMA, I was just like in a blaze of aggression. I was like a Vandalay Silver in his prime. Uh, but you start to overcomplicate it as you get on. Paralysis by analysis. Analysis paralysis. I think that's what they say. Uh, and he said he's got to go back to being primal, animalistic, beating up his sparring partners. Uh, and I, I, I get it. I do. I do. You know, at the end of the day, as technical a sport it is, you've still got a grown man trying to knock you unconscious, trying to put you to sleep. You know what I mean? And you've got to you've got to have that dog in you. You know what I'm saying? You've got to you got to be, have that wildness. So there you go. Uh, anyway, Vandalay Silver in the Hall of Fame, of course. Vandalay Silva was one of the guys that inspired me when I got told about MMA in 2003. Um, I didn't really know what MMA was. I'd heard of the UFC, but I didn't. I didn't know what it was. I wasn't following it. Can you answer my super chat above, Mike Seven? I, I, I didn't see it, mate. Hold on, we'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, what's this one here? Boo Dante says, Michael. My mum knocked me out two days ago. How do I overcome being scared of her and knock her out like you did Dan Henderson? Please help me. It's bad when she's drunk. Well, listen, mate. We know you're taking the piss. Right? And it's, it's, it's a pretty funny question. But the reality is we can't mock or make light of these kind of real-life situations. And I'm not being a little snowflake or anything like that. Um, you know, your mum knocked you out two days ago. She should have bloody knocked some sense into your lad. That's what my mum would have said. Anyway, uh, let's go down here. Bishop, did you see I did? Would you fight Amanda Nunes? She'd probably batter me these days. My cardio's not what it used to be. Jones takes Big Franny out in MMA. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Chandler wasted all that time waiting for a fight that's never going to happen. I hope not. I hope not. I hope for the sake of Michael Chandler that McGregor versus Chandler still goes ahead. Chandler's a good dude, man. He's a really, really nice guy. We know he's a beast as a fighter. Um... But he's been waiting, what, I don't know, two years or so? 18 months, close to two years for a fight with McGregor that might not materialise. So it's such a shame because he's in his prime. He's at the peak of his earning powers. And as fans, we want to see him fight as well because he's an absolute monster. Uh, he might have to move on. He might have to move on and just say, listen, when you're ready, McGregor, give me a call. And when that time comes, I'll fight. The problem is if he loses in the meantime, then that fight would kind of be off the table. So it's a tough one, isn't it? He's waiting for that red panty night. I don't know how big the panty night would be, but he could have had three fights by now. Buy some good panties with three paychecks of uh, Michael Chandler. Anyway, 
Hi, Mike. Why does Justin Gagey call me biased? Well, when I was commentating Leon Edwards versus Kamara Usman, he felt that I was being a little, a little biased towards Leon. I wasn't. I was calling the fight exactly how I saw it. It's not like me and me and Leon are great friends or anything like that. Uh, and just because somebody comes from the same country as me doesn't mean that I automatically go, right, that's my guy. You know what I mean? I actually have a relationship with Kamaru more than Leon. I've been around Kamaru for a long time. So so I, I understand his logic, but his logic's completely flawed. You know, I've, I've worked with Kamaru several times at the Fox Studios and stuff like that, just being around mixed martial arts and on the road, having him on my podcast and stuff like that. Um, so he thought I was being a little biased in the commentary. It is what it is. I think actually Justin came out and apologised, I think. He said, oh, he didn't apologise. I think Justin said he, he, he shouldn't have said that. So I take that as an apology. And I don't care anyway. Fair play to him. I'm a fan of Justin Gagey in versus Holloway at 300. That's an, that's a, that's an amazing fight. Who did he knock out for the BMF? Was that, was that Dustin Poirier? Was that for the BMF belt? I think it was. i got to touch my fucking eyeball again. Uh, let's have a look at the sumo, see what's going on here. So look, we're getting down to the last few matches. The last few matches. So who's in this quarterfinal? We've got Arashi versus Kamal. And we've got Bazira versus Gagliov. Gagliov. The Gagger versus the Ferret. Anyway, we'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, so, yeah, just engages the man. Hi, Bispin. Please get Cheeto on the show soon, please. When is UFC 299? Let's have a look. Let's have, uh, let's have a look at this. Hold on. UFC 299. Wikipedia. Bosch. Boom. Let's have a look at the fight card. Um, we'll go there. I mean, look at that. What a fight card that is. Unbelievable. Uh, so that is, the fight goes down. I think it's only three weeks away. When is it? March 9th. March 9th. What are we on now? Yeah, three weeks. I can't bother him. It's too close. It, it, it's too close to be bothering him to come on a podcast. Oops. Um, it really is. You know what I mean? It's a big, big deal. This is life-changing for him. He gets to realize a lifelong dream. So we'll get him after the podcast, hopefully. Sorry, sorry. After the belt, hopefully. What do we think? Let me know in the comments on... Uh, I agree. I think you're opposite. You were super hard on Cheeto. And when you were under Perillo. Are you talking about um, bloody uh, being biased eh, towards my friends? Look at that fight card. O'Malley, Vera, Benoit, Saint-Denis versus Dustin Poirier. What do we think about that one? Michael Venom Page, Kevin Holland. That's brilliant. It's nice to see Michael Venom Page in the UFC. It's where he belongs. It's where he deserves to be. Do you know what I mean? Number one, just the nicest guy you'll ever meet. But a monster. What a martial artist he is. He's fantastic. Uh, so it's nice. I think he's 36. So he doesn't have too long left, but it's nice to see him come here, make a splash. And he wants Leon Edwards in England. And you never know. Leon Edwards and Michael Venom Page, that would be a phenomenal matchup. What a stylistic matchup that would be. Gilbert Burns, Jack Della Madalena, Peter Yan Song Yudong. Great fight card. Let's have a look at Zisomo. See what's happening here. We're on an ad break. Nothing I can do about that. The first fight I ever watched was Rampage and Silver. My God, I was six. My dad had buddies over, and the first punch he hit Ram Rampage with. How it made Rampage pause. I'll never forget that moment. Thoughts on Bigfoot still fighting. Is Antonio Silva Bigfoot still fighting? Jesus Christ. Is he really? Uh, I know Antonio Silva. I used to train with him. I used to train with him in England. Massive, gigantic guy. He was a nightmare to train with, I tell you that. He beat the shit out of me on a good few occasions. We're on the intermission. Let's have a listen to the... The little, the little sound. No, there is no sound. There's no sound on the intermish. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, Antonio Bigfoot Silver. 
Yeah, big, big monster. He came over from Brazil. He just battered everyone in England. Nobody could stop him. There used to be a guy in England called Tengiz Tadorads. I think that was his name. And he was like the baddest man. No man alive could take Tengiz. Bigfoot Silver came over and just battered him. Oh, my God. It was bad. It was bad. Anyway, uh, Bispin, you still drink lots of water throughout the day. I do. This is water with electrolytes in it right now. I try to. Got to stay hydrated. My wife says that I'm obsessed. Don't know why she would say that. You need water. It is the elixir of life. Should Aljo collab with an elite boxer for a 45-pound debut? What you mean? That's a weird way of asking, Mike. Should Aljamain Sterling box? Is that what you're asking? I don't think so. I don't think he has the hands for that. He's a great wrestler and a fantastic mixed martial artist. Bigfoot versus Mark Hunt were one of the best fights you ever watched. Bigfoot, Mark Hunt, Brisbane, Australia. What a fight. Oh, my God. Phenomenal. I think it was Bigfoot and Mark Hunt. It was. I'm pretty sure. Or was it Bigfoot and somebody else? I think it was Mark. Was it? Yeah, it was Mark Hunt. Yeah. Bigfoot in Strike Force. He was a monster. We need Bisping. <laughs> Some stupid fucking comments on here. When are you making my sumo debut? I'll have a do. Get me in it. Celebrity sumo. Hey! I'll have a fucking go. I don't think I'd do very good, though. Callum comes home. They're still on the break. Still on the intermish. Um, Callum comes back from, from um, what's it called, college. Well, no, he's not in college anymore. San Francisco. He comes back, and he always grabs me, and he throws me around like an absolute bloody rag doll. Like a rag doll. Anyway, you like Machida's rehydration? <laughs> Machida's rehydration plan better. So, Loyoto Machida used to drink his own piss for the, the, the nutrients. Not really my vibe. I like to take the piss, not drink the piss. Oh, dear. Do I think Volk was robbed? Yeah. It's sad to see for, 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 for Volkanovsky. It is, honestly, I don't think anybody enjoyed seeing that unless you were obviously a relative or in the camp of Ilya Taporia. There's just... Volkanovsky has such an energy and a warmth to him that as soon as he walks in the room, he just lights the room up. He's so humble. You know, he really is. He's, he's generous with his time. He's a great interview. Incredible fighter, obviously. I'm sure he's an amazing family man. You know, certainly seems like it. It's just, you can't do it. I mean, he defended the belt five times. I'm not saying that he's done. I'm not saying that his time as a championship fighter is over. It sounds like I'm saying that. I'm just saying, if it is, I understand it. Because it's hard to stay on top. You can't stay on top forever. I mean, that's what I used to say about McGregor. You know, you hit your peak, you become a two-weight division champion, and then you go down the other side. That's a hard peak to stay on. Volkanovski being the featherweight champion, tough peak to stay on. Did it for a long time. Five title fights. You know what I'm saying? So there's no shame. There's no shame. But what would make it even better? If he could come back and defeat Aliyah Tapori in a rematch, that would be an incredible story. And I'll tell you what, if anyone can do it, it's Volk, isn't it? Let's be honest. But it's just... It's just your fear for the man. But that's what makes it exciting. That's the beauty of this sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's dude says here, it's the back-to-back -back chaos. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. But a lot of people have been KO'd. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's a part of the sport, man. And it's what makes it so exciting. It is. The, 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 the stakes are so high. The stakes are high. This is a long intermission for this sumo thing. My God, they are going on. They're showing the same package over and over again. There's no music on it at all. Just my suggestion, sumo people. Next time you do a nice little package like this, have a bit of music. I'm sure there's meant to be music, but it's just not coming through the stream. Anyway, we've got a super chat here. Please look up Takono Yama sumo highlights. You will not believe it. I will do. But not right now, buddy. Pedro says, Bisping, avenge Volk for me and cut down and fight Aaliyah. Oh, dear. I, I, I tell you what, Aaliyah Tapori is a nice guy as well. I interviewed him on the YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, 
check it out. Last week, last Wednesday, Thursday, it went up. Uh, we had a good chat. Nice guy. A nice warm energy as well. Obviously, English is in his first language. But uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed my time talking to him. Humble guy. right? I know he seems cocky as hell. But he was really humble and he was really likable. He was. Uh, he's just, he's got an opponent. When you're going to fight someone, you got to talk shit. you got to start, uh, well, not everyone does, but a lot of people, they want to talk shit. They want to be confident. They're trying to convince themselves as well as everybody else. Uh, and you're trying to make them doubt themselves, you know. Some people, that can work on. Some people like Volkanovski, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter. I don't think that had any impact on the result of the fight. Volkanovski is like George St. Pierre, mentally the bulletproof, you know. Uh, and yeah, so Taporia, man, he's going to be a big star. And here's the crazy thing about Elia Taporia. 27 years old. 27 years old, 14 and 0, third, 15 and 0. 15 and 0. I think 13 finishes, 27 years old. And he drinks wine to cut weight. <laughs> I know I've been banging on about that a lot, but it's it's crazy to me. I have a couple of glasses of wine. I have a headache the next day. He has half a litre of wine. So I, that, that's a, I'd say that's a few a good few glasses of wine. No wonder he's so fucking happy, though. <laughs> do I believe in ghosts, Laughing Buddha? No, I don't. I do not believe in ghosts at all. I don't believe in spirits. I don't believe in life after death. I just don't. And it's weird because... For some reason, that offends people. Why would that offend anybody? I'm respectful. You know, I might make a few little jokes here and there, but if you don't, I was raised as a Roman Catholic. So I've got, I've got nothing against people that are religious. My mum is very religious. You know what I mean? I just don't feel it. And I don't believe in ghosts and I don't believe in life after death. And some people get, oh, God. It's like, relax, bro. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I just don't feel it. Does that make me a bad person? I'm a cyclops sent from Satan, is what people say sometimes. Anyway, have I heard of simulation hypothesis? I have heard of that North Sea. Yeah, I have heard of the simulation theory that we're all just living in a simulation, kind of like the Matrix, if you will. Uh, I'll be honest. I find that to be more credible. I find that to be more credible than the fucking... On the... Uh, what the Bible says. <laughs> I'm sorry. I find it more credible that we're living in a simulation. Then God just went, Bosh, let there be light. Bosh, let's have man. And he saw that he was good. And again, I don't want to be blasphemous. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just giving my opinions. And I'm always silly with everything that I do. So if it seems like I'm being like that, I apologize if it offends you. And I don't know how the hell we got on this. Somebody asked me if I believe in ghosts. Uh, so yeah, anyway, enough of that. Because people get the knickers in a twist. Certainly out here in America, there's a lot of very, very religious people out there in the UK where I'm from. People don't really care. They don't care. They don't care at all. So anyway... Well, we had a few super chats that I missed there. Let me go through them. Alberto, thank you. Is Pereira versus Hill 300 main event worthy? Yes. It's a great main event to, to tap off or cap off. A phenomenal night of fights. An absolutely phenomenal night of fights. UFC 300 on the Saturday. Power slap on the Friday night. I'll be commentating that one. I'll be working the ESPN desk. So a busy, busy week. Uh, I'm excited for it. UFC 300 going to be something special. And it's amazing to see the sport, how far it's come, isn't it? Let's be honest. To see how far the sports came, considering that they won, it wasn't allowed on TV. It wasn't allowed on TV, but porn was. People never used to give mixed martial artists any credit whatsoever. I mean, it wasn't that long ago I was arguing with a journalist in the UK and he's like, yeah, this is this is, this is is stuff for thugs. It's not credible and all the rest of it. Last night, there was Mark Zuckerberg ringside all night and I think he might have been in Volkanovski's corner as well. And I think that just speaks so many levels 
out of how far this sport has come. Because Mark Zuckerberg has got to be a very, very smart guy. Hey, up my back. You can see, Sumo once is back. again, got the, sound. the semi-final match. The semifinals are almost upon us. We'll go back to that in a minute. Yeah, Zuckerberg's a smart guy. He loves MMA, you know? My mother-in-law, she loves MMA. Very, very smart lady. Not your typical demographic, you know? So it's, 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 it is fantastic to see. Anyway, did I go... I'm going to have to get my glasses. This is driving me nuts. My contact lens is constantly moving. Let me oil you up. <laughs> oil up this contact lens. You can oil that up, buddy. Why do you think, oh, why do you think featherweight champs reign for so long? Well, I see what you're saying. You're talking about Jose Aldo. You're talking about Max Holloway. And you're talking about Alexander Volkanovsky. 900 to the Club Sumo 2 champion. Um, I don't think he's anything to do with the weight. It just so happened that there's three fantastic champions. You know, nothing to do with the weight class. Just kind of a coincidence there. Rebecca! No, she's gone. She's not well. She's probably in bed. She should be in bed. Right, anyway. Mike, when you got st struck in your eye and suffered the terrible injury, what was going through your mind? What were you thinking? <laughs> um... Well, I'll tell you what went through my mind. Vito Belfort's shin bone. You know what I mean? That's what went Ladies and eyes. gentlemen, once again, welcome to the Prudential Center. We back, are ready to start the semifinals. The winner on YouTube. will advance to the finals, and we will find out who yeah, thanks, babe. is the dominance. Because of... I can't bloody see a goddamn thing. Yeah, Vito Belfort, his foot is what went through my mind. Uh, thoughts on Zuck being a stud? Hey, I like anyone that's going to support the sport of mixed martial arts and the UFC. And he, he was smiling at me last night, so that's all it takes. Give me a nice little smile. Mark Zuckerberg seemed like a nice, friendly guy. We made eye contact a few times. I kept making eye contact with a lot of fucking, like, uh, the, the, a, a lot of people, and it was, it was getting to the point where it was weird. You know what I mean? I didn't mean to be making eye contact. I kept looking that way and looking at John Anik, and there was a couple of people in, like, the VIP section, and it looked to them like I was staring at them, but I was looking at John Anik, and I was like, oh, God, they think I'm looking at them. I'm not. I'm looking at John Anik. Oh, dear. So there, was a, there was a few, like, awkward, like, those going on. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Anywho. Right, let's have a look at the sumo. Look at this guy making the walk. The quarterfinals. Okay, and when did you guys kiss? Ah, shut up. I like how you don't hold any grudge. I don't. I mean, I'm not a fan of Vito Belfort just because of the hypocrisy. But whatever. You know, listen, life's too short to hold on to grudges. It really is. You know what I mean? We're not here for a long time. Some people longer than others. But it's a pretty short time. So just focus on your family. Focus on living the best life possible. Because I tell you what, I, I saw this the other day. Weighing 200 and... From Zigzag, Egypt. Introducing... Zigzag, Egypt. Oh, thanks, babe. Thank you, darling. If I give you my contact... Oh, God, I'm sticking my finger in my eyeball. Every two bloody... Se you could have cleaned them for me. Jeez Louise, they are... They're misty. They are misty. Look at the size of this beefcake, B.A. Baracus. There we go. And the Lord said, let there be light. And he saw, for the first time ever, the absolute oh, no, size of this monster. Jesus Christ. Your D.O.G. for this match is Ronnie Altman. Ronnie D.O.G., referee. Uh, right, so we've got a bit of a size disparity here. I mean, that guy's, that he's a good athlete, the white sash. This is the semi-final. He's in good shape. If he's got here to the semi-final, he's obviously got a lot of skill. Looks very strong. The dude there on the left with the bald head, he's in the semi-final. So he's, he's the bigger dude. He's got natural advantages there. But a lot of excess blubber, which I guess in sumo will help. But you know what I mean? It's not it's necessarily the most efficient system that he's working with, is it? 
you know, he's going to carry all that weight around as well. That guy's big. You're not joking, Amberly Rose. Absolutely bloody gigantic. I'm going to get back to my little lecture about uh, enjoying your life while you can in just a moment. We've got the semi-final. I'm revved up for this one. Let's have a little bit of volume. Let's go. Strong, strong chest. Ball dozing. Muhammad Kamal clipping the dark horse out of the doyo. Ran right through him. That first hand right up into the chin. And like I said earlier, it's so hard to recover. Ran right through him is correct. Literally. Look at that. Here's a, here's a little tip for the sumo people. Here's a little tip. They need to make the circle bigger. I mean, listen, granted, I'm sure sumo's like thousands of years old and somebody might have considered that in the past. It's not exactly groundbreaking. But the fight's finished so quick, or the matches, the contests. Osuna Arashi glaring daggers at the dark horse. All right, well, the dark horse... He's got to be this careful the here. We often see. I mean, Semi-final. A lot on the line. This fella here. He's this close to him. Oh! oh! He did oh! it! He matadored him! That was oh, genius. He commits and he, is he out. Bloody... Muhammad... Ilya Taporiad him. He matadored him. He knew the big old boy was going to make a run. Sidestepped. Let's have a look at this. This was clever. I like this. Boom. Look at that. Whew. It's like a video game move. Step to the side. Cha-cha, real smooth. <laughs> right step right now. <laughs> Turn it up. Oh, my God. That was great. That was fantastic. You little devil. So, we got the, the, the third and final. Yeah, big old boy. You can't just go running at them like a bloody bull in a china shop. My God. I like that. That was good. You do not shy away from the tachi eye. So All right. I think we're going to see I'm into this. against Kamal. <laughs> He's got the demonic smile. <laughs> Most KOs in a calendar year up again. That was good. That was smart. I like that. And the other guy's kicking himself. He's like, why would I just run at the guy? One, one, All right, here we go. Will he do it Holland, again? The tension. In. It's killing me. Break. All right, let's have a look. All oh, right, that is that Laura Sanko commentating. She'll go for anybody's job. <laughs> Laura's great. She's absolutely fantastic to work with. She's hilarious. She's awesome. Uh, what size bra does he wear? Come on, dude. Oh, yeah, E Honda versus Ryu. Yeah, I can see the comparisons there in terms of size for sure. He matadored him. Right, so now they've locked up. That was good. That was great. So he's, he's trying to pull me for the underhook. 50-50. Over-unders here. The big old boy's pushing him back. you got to rotate, buddy. Ryu's got to rotate. E Honda's going to have him. He's got him. He's got, you're just going to take one step forward. Oh, oh, oh. See, if he gets the underhook, you can rotate him and turn him, but it looks like E Honda gets the victory. Boom, there it is. Ho, 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 ho. E Honda for the victory. Congratulations. Oh, good, interesting match, that one. I enjoyed that. That little sidestep, that was brilliant. Anyway, what was I saying? Oil checked him, threw him out of the club. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, you're only here for a very, very short time, guys. I know it feels like forever, but it's not. And do you know what? And this is what I was going to say. I saw this tweet or Instagram or meme or whatever it was. Or a quote is probably what it was. You know, when you die, shortly after that, everybody you know will also die. And soon you're just going to be forgotten about. And any memory of you even existing will be forgotten about. You know what I'm saying? And it's so true because we think we're so important and we are all masses of our own universe and all the rest of it, but we're going to die and everyone we know that's going to die and we're going to be forgotten about. So make the most of it, people. Make the most. And if you're putting all your eggs into one basket that you're going to go off to heaven and all the rest of it, great, good. But you, we're going to die, man. So just live your life. Don't put it off. Take those trips. Make things happen. Like that guy asking, should he should he uh, start training MMA? Go for it. You know what I mean? 
God damn, Mike, stop making me sad. Yeah, no, I know. It, it is kind of sad, but it's also inspiring at the same time. You know, you need to hear this stuff. You got to go for it. Do you know what I mean? You can't just fucking waste your life away. You got to get out there, do some things, meet some new people, have some challenges, you know? Enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Do what you can. And I know for some people it's harder than others, but do what you can if you're in a position where you can make this little short trip to planet Earth a fun one. Fucking go for it, I say. Anyway, when did he kick the car to bits? <laughs> Street Fighter 2. Oh, that's it. I forgot about that bit. Was that just... That wasn't on the home version, was it? That was just on the arcade and you kicked the shit out of the car. Preach, Mike. Yeah, it is a bit preachy, but it's true. It's true. You know, we're going to move soon. We live here in California, but we're not going to stay in California. We're going to go... We're going to go buy, like, uh, some land in, like, North Carolina, somewhere like that. We don't know where. We're going to go buy, like, a, a house with a bunch of land. And we're going to, you know, have some bloody chickens and horses. And Rebecca's going to have bees and make honey. And I'm going to have a little gym on there and run a little local jiu-jitsu or MMA club for kids, you know, just as a retired man. Because you've got to keep moving. You know, having money's all well and good, but you've got to have a purpose in life. You know, and this retiring stuff, you're not supposed to retire as human beings. You're supposed to keep moving. You know, before modern civilization, we were always still active. You're going to have a purpose. So we're going to go buy like a little farm somewhere and nowhere fancy. You know what I mean? Bunch of land, have some animals, grow some vegetables. Sounds boring, but I'm looking forward to it. Sounds great. Anyway, come to North Korea. I'll see you there, buddy. I'll see you there. Visas are easy to get. Thoughts on Eddie Hall's MMA debut being cancelled? Is Eddie Hall fighting? I know he was training with Tom Aspinall. I don't know. I, 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 he is the I did not know I that he was actually going to fight. Hey, good luck to him. So, yeah, I don't know, mate. I've got no thoughts on that. I don't know anything about that. Um, that sounds awesome. It does. It does. But I'm also worried that it's going to get boring. Rebecca's all about it. She's all about it. She's looking at places. And there's some lovely places. You get out of California, shit, the price drops. Here he is. This guy was good. Um, the price drops phenomenally. So we can afford something. With, and I want something on like a lake or a bit. Of, do you know what it is? It's the England in me. I want some bloody greenery. Down here in California, everything's so bloody arid. Garrett... You, you took the words out of my mouth. Is Jason Perillo an option for the podcast? Yes, he is. I'm going to text him in a minute, actually. I was thinking that last week, actually. I want to get Perillo on. Have a good old catch up with him. Build an underground shelter too. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Camille Bazira. 370 pounds. That's a big slab of meat. That is a big old boy. Where do you want to retire to? USA? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I mean, obviously we're in USA. My wife's Australian. We could go there. But we've, we've, we've kind of established roots and the kids are here in America now. So and they're, 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 they're not leaving. I am Mike Holmes Harrington. Look, lock me up. No, well. All right, so Gaglioff versus the other dude. I forget his name already. I should start a show with George St. Pierre. I should. That'd do massive numbers. Don't think George needs to do a show, though. I really don't. I mean, I'd do it. I'd do it. If George is up for it, let's do it. S speak to his people. Okay, I think this is this quarter semi final. Semi final here. Get Aspinall on for the podcast. Yeah, I was talking to Tom Aspinall last week. He's up for doing it, probably. He said, he said actually this coming week, so I'll reach out. Bisping loves it here in America. I do love it. We have a great life, man. We have a great life. That's why whenever I talk, and, you know, I... I, I, I oh. That's going to be a false start. Let's have a listen. He is now. <laughs> they love a good shoulder ram, don't they? Shoulder barge. Just sprint at your opponent. 
Got to watch out for those side One steps. One of our fan favorite wrestlers, Rui Jr., believes he's going to be the winner of tonight. So keep an eye out here for Big Kimo. He might be getting an upset. I Big Kimo. That Hui Jr. Did not compete today. All right, here we go. Big and the clash Kimo in the center. The Washi, but Gaglov, leveraging all the strength. Underhooks are key. He's got the underhooks. He lifts him up, and that's it. Oh! i tell you what. Big Kimo picks him up, 370 pounds, picks him up like he's absolutely nothing and throws him out of there. Big Kimo with the upset, picks up Saslon Gagliov, gets the double and the hooks, grabs the belt, picks him up, and that is it. That's all she wrote. Very, very good. Um, did Aspinall set the standard on how to deal with a knee injury? Some guys don't take the time to let the knee grow back. And try to rush their Negro. Oh, you're a dickhead. You're, you're a dickhead. You're a dickhead. Bisping, be honest. Does Dern... Because I was about to say, you're an absolute idiot. What do you mean, let the... Oh, shut up. Bisping, be honest. Does Mackenzie Dern dropping Jason as a boxing coach have anything to do with her divorce? What? Don't be stupid. Of course it doesn't. Why should she get rid of such a great coach? Oh, sorry. I see what you're saying. I thought maybe because he was interfering in the marriage or something. No, not at all. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I do know, but it's none of my business. <laughs> um, but obviously, if you're training with Jason Perillo, your boxing is going to get better. He's, a trim he's one of the best boxing coaches you'll find. He's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and if you're not training with him, you're not going to have as much as a focus. I mean, she's a very, very jujitsu heavy orientated fighter. Simple as that. You know what I mean? So you need an influence, an outside influence, cleaning up certain parts. If you're not there, then she's going to go back to how she used to be. And I think her striking has regressed a little bit. She was kind of wild on Saturday night, rushing in and just swinging wildly. But she did talk about that. I understand why she was doing that, because she was trying to make sure she sticks to her grappling roots. That's what made her successful in the first place. But the entries into the clinch, she was just kind of trying to punch her way in. You've got to be a little bit tighter because she ran onto some massive counters from Amanda Lemosh. And Lemosh, by the way, she looked bloody good. She was, That was the best version of Amanda Lemosh we've ever seen. The absolute beatdown that she suffered from Zhang Wei Li might have created a monster because she looked good last night. <clears throat> and fair play to Mackenzie Dern, by the way, right? She's as tough as they come. My God, because she took a hiding. She really took a hiding. At the end of the third round, she's cheering on the crowd. Obviously, trained very hard. Um, you know, in phenomenal cardio shape. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, she, 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 sorry, I was just reading the comments. Yeah, Mackenzie Dare, she's great. She's a lovely human being, lovely girl. Um, yeah, it, it, it was tough. It was tough. Tough to see. A lot of fans were disappointed, but Amanda Lemosh was really good. But I'll tell you what, Dern did herself proud, you know. She came into it, she got, she got back into it for like the second half of round one and two, I believe. Um, here we go, semi-final. We've got another one up here. Let's have a look. Crowd loves Kimo, Big but Kimo. momentum is on Gagloff's side. Fan favourite. Both of them Saslon are <laughs> Looking shiny in the dojo here tonight. It's tough. It's a high-intensity, high-octane sport. Oh, absolutely. The stakes are high. Thoughts on Lethway. Ronnie Armand we'll talk about it in a minute, buddy. Here Gagloff we go. Ready. Gagloff is oh, ready. Oh, no, big Kimo. Big Kimo. To the upset of Saslon a little bit. I mean, he's... Big Kimo's shaking it off. Having a second. Gagliov doing the same. Let's listen to the commentary. Yeah, when you've got that adrenaline ready to go and somebody just kind of dumps you... You know, it, it, it leaves you at a weird feeling in, in a competition setting. Oh, Gagliov trying to talk to Ronnie Almond a little bit. Gagliov. The action. So look at all the people. Being a Karen in the doyo. I wonder if these are sumo fans. With what's at stake, I understand. Because I didn't realize sumo had such guys, a following. The I mean, you people watching this, are you sumo sold fans? Here tonight wants action. It looks Come cool, on. though. Uh, all right, here we go. Like Gagliov forces him back. Oh, oh. Great job. Nice. There with the nice. Head direction. The Russian returns to the finals. It shall be Osuna Arashi and Saslan Gagloff, Madison Gwynn. The Arashi replay. versus yeah, Gagloff for the here final. Really nice he shot here. Yeah, look at that. Just swings him down. I don't know the terminology. I don't know sumo. This is insane. It is kind of insane. 
I wonder what the ticket prices are like. Yeah, I have no idea. Should we have a look? We do have the power of the internet. World Championship Sumo. Let's have a little looks you do. Should we have a little looks you do? World. World Champion. Shit. Oh, man. I hate this keyboard. It always makes me push multiple keys. World Championship Sumo. Newark. Boom. StubHub. Boom. Let's boom it. How much are the tickets? No, can't see it. Oh, there's an Anaheim one coming up. The World Games. It's booming. Business is booming in the world of sumo. Let's have a listen to the interview. Storm, where are you? Sandstorm! Sandstorm. Give it up for your win, everybody. Saffron Gavrov, the big bear, in a brilliant victory tonight. It's a match. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a Good old Saslon. Uh, all right, Matt Carney says, as well as developing mental, phys sorry, physical strength, one should become emotionally grounded and developed. Those with childlike emotional responses were often prey for yourself at press conferences. Why was this? Yeah, I mean, that's essentially, thank you, Matt. Good to see you again, brother. You're often here in the chat, so I appreciate the support on the channel. Uh, as well as developing physical strength, one should become emotionally grounded and developed. Those with childlike emotional responses were often prey for yourself at press conferences. I mean, I, I was, I would have often, to be honest, emotional childlike responses as well. And we see a lot of fighters be like that generally, you know, that my kids aren't like that because they've had a nice, stable upbringing. In our house, you know, they've had a, the best mother you could ever wish for. Rebecca's just a natural mother. That's all she ever wanted to be. And she's created an environment in a house full of love. Uh, so they're emotionally stable. Our house was a bit mental. My mum and dad loved, loved us all dearly, of course, but there was a lot of arguing and shouting and a bit of violence, a lot of violence. So like, you know, um, and six brothers and sisters, and a lot of arguing, just arguing all the time. Uh, so, so, you know, you don't develop that emotional maturity. And I think a lot of fighters, that's how they end up fighting. That's how they realize that they have the ability to fight, right? Because if, if, you, if you were so emotionally, if you were, I'm not saying all fighters are like this, if you are emotionally stable, you probably wouldn't be getting into fights in the first place. Granted, you can still do martial arts, test yourselves, enter tournaments, figure out that you're good, and then take it all the way. There's also, uh, th but th those people that do that, I guess now are becoming more and more frequent because the sports got so much bigger and it's becoming a career option. You know, guys like Il Ilya Taporia, you know. Look at this, this is cool, man. Is, is there sound to this? Let me hear. Taking the concrete cowboy's cowboy hat. Struggling at that to get it off the big <laughs> head. <laughs> get it off the big head. Oh, oh well, that's Ibrahim not nice. And Osuna a little bit of dirty work. Fun and games. Here's the work. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so a lot of fighters. I lost my flow. I apologize, Matt Carney. Um, but yeah, you kind of get the vibe of what I'm saying. Anyway, Tristan James, stop lecturing everyone. Bisping, we're watching fucking sumo. All right. We're watching sumo. Stop going on. Tristan James, huge Volk fan. It was hard to see him like that. It really was, bud. I know Volk does not want, need our opinions, but if you were on his team... What would his advice be? What would my advice be? Well, you're obviously uh, a little late to the party there, brother, because we went over this before. So I will, I'll keep it quick. Um, um, take some time off. I don't think he's done. He's not done, right? That's who he is. He spoke about how emotional he gets when he's not fighting and the need uh, to fight, you know? How he needs it for his psyche. That's why he took that short notice match up against uh, Islam in the first place, right? But um, he's got to take some time off and rest. Time off and rest. And we'll see. You know, he could beat Taporia in a rematch. But I wouldn't rush back. That would be my advice. Anyway, how do I increase the Super Chat amount? I have no idea, mate. I have no idea how any of this shit works. <laughs> I'm bloody useless. The fact that I've managed to get this sumo on the same screen, 
is very surprising. <laughs> I'm not good. I am not tech savvy. You've probably seen the press alt for function delete, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, I'm not tech savvy, mate. Which kid can win the title again? That Matador was so sneaky. Are you talking about the sidestep on the sumo? Or are you talking about Ilya Taporia? That combination, man. That right hook. It was beautiful. It's the same right hook as well. It's the same right hook that put Jai Herbert to sleep. Remember when Taporia fought Jai Herbert in London? Jai Herbert, tall, long, rangy kickboxer, kicked him in the head, almost finished Taporia. That's how you know the man's a real fighter as well because he was able to fight back after a moment like that. He got kicked in the head. He was almost finished. He grabbed a single leg and then turned it into a takedown. Amazing survival instincts. Uh, and then in the second round, backed him up against the fence. One, two, came to the body, right hook, all the way through, floored him, knocked him out. It was the same shot that he knocked out Bokanovsky with. That right hook, man. That right hook is something else. Yeah. My date said it looked fake. Well, your date's a dickhead. It was not fake. It was not fake. I know. I want to see Big Belly Barry. Big Belly Barry's not on this one. What's some advice on the first day of a new job? Thank you. I mean, it depends what your job is, but generally, you want to get along with everyone. That's part of the, that's, that's life. You got to be good to work with. Oswald Twizzle is the most British name for a town ever. Yeah, I just saw that a second. Hi, Mike, I'm watching from Oswald Twizzle. Ozzy, near Accrington. Have you been here? It's close to Clitheroe. Of course I've been down, Ozzy. Yeah, of course. Oswald Twizzle. Aussie, Aussie, as we call it. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, listen, life, it's relationships. And if you're a dickhead, people aren't gonna be wanna people aren't gonna wanna be around you. If you're difficult, if you're a pain in the ass, right? Even if in your little bubble you think you're great, and you got a couple of little minions that think you're great as well, it ain't gonna go far. You ain't gonna last long. You've got to bloody You've got to be easy to work with, right? So make friends, be nice, be polite, be respectful. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Good luck in the new job, buddy. I've got a little text here. Let's have a look. Don't allow. You and Rogan and Anik are a killer trio. Thank you very much. That's a text from an old friend. Anyway, um, he hit him in the back of the head before the knockout punch. You're talking about Taporia. I don't know about that. I think this is the final here, guys. Should we have a little listen? We've got some super chats up here, though. Daniel Cormier versus John Fury in a sumo wrestling match would be lit. Kristen Jayen. Anybody versus John Fury in anything would be lit. No man alive should be trying to face John Fury. In a sumo match. No, man. No, man. God. <laughs> Here we go. Camille Bazira, big chemo versus the Black Horse. This is going to be a good one. There it is. The Black Horse, Mohamed Kamal versus Kamal Bazira. Big chemo. We've got the Black Horse. It's going down. Oh, no. This is for third place. Third place. Okay. Okay. What's up with the BYM co-host? Anthony Smith. Yeah. No, I know he's been a little bit, uh, hasn't been around as much lately. Uh, we, we, we decided for him to do one a week. But last week, uh, he, he, he couldn't he couldn't make it. Let's be honest, he might have been hungover because he's, he's from Kansas and they, they won the Super Bowl. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> We've all been there. He might have called in a sickie. I don't know. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he did. Fair play if he did. It's not like I haven't done that. Anyway, John Jones could probably defend with one arm, but won't. I don't think so, buddy. John Jones is phenomenal, but he's only a human being, right? He's only a human being. He's a very, very incredible fighter. He's a very incredible fighter, bad English. He's an incredible fighter. But what is going on with this bloody stream? Is it poor? To our third place matchup. There's a long time on that graphic. Let's go. Oh, it just changed. No, it didn't. 
Um, anyway, Bisping, Kansas City isn't in Kansas. No, I know it's not. It's in Missouri, but he's a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Right? How's that for you? That's why I said that. He's a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. I've been to Kansas City and I didn't see Dorothy. The edge of the circle should be slightly elevated and sloped with some angles so the wrestlers can plant their feet better when close to the edge. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Daniel. I'd say make the sumo pit elevated as well. Do you know what I mean? Just for the spectacle. Because if these people watch it, don't get me wrong, it's cool, right? Imagine you throw them off. You throw them off the platform. Go on, son, go on. He's, he's running in like a rock star. Cause problems for every competitor now. Yeah, that sounds badass now. Lift up the platform, the circle platform, and you throw them off. It makes it so much more dramatic. That's what should, they should do. Maybe in like the old UFC days, they have a bit of water, maybe a couple of alligators in there, raise the stakes a little bit. You know, that was floated as an idea, apparently. Apparently in, in legendary, legend as legend goes, apparently that was floated around once in the original owners. I don't know if it's true though. But yeah, I think this, look at the crowd. There's a lot of people there. If they were getting thrown off a ledge, I think it'd just make it a bit more exciting. Justin Gage versus Taporia. <sighs> Who've I got? Snuckums. Snuckums. There's a new one. I've never been called Snuckums before. Justin Gage versus Taporia. Oh, man. Oh, man. See, oh, man. I never, never considered this. Taporia going for double champ status. Going up to 155 when he's done the business at 145. My God. Come back to that one. Remind me of that one, Snuckums. Let's have a listen to the intros. I'm actually quite excited for this final. Snuckums. His opponent across the dojo. Big belly Barry. 370 pounds Big chemo. from Cairo, Egypt, presenting Kamal Bazira. Oh, no, this is for third Big place. Key. Sorry. No, we're not having the intro for third place. I'm sorry. Only no man alive gets excited for competing for third. No man alive. Justin smokes him. Yeah, I mean, more than likely, you got to go with Justin Gagey over Ilya Taporia. Taporia just beat Volkanovski, who became the featherweight champion. But I wouldn't be so sure about anything. I think Taporia can bloody do some big things in this sport. Maybe being a double champion one day is possible. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, that's something to think about and consider. Other people have done it. Volkanovski had a good fight with Islam when he had a full camp. Look at what Taporia did to him. That was ridiculous. All right, let's have a listen. Oh, Sierra, oh down! Wow. Big chemo brought to the canvas by the Dark Horse. Slams. Great job by Mohamed Kamal going down for that single leg. All he had to do was yeah, pick went up for that the single leg, leg drove straight through. Balance. Let's take a look Here's here. The replay, Madison Gwynn, walk me through it. As Boom. you can see, uh, Mohamed Kamal drops Grabs in the on single. That single oh, leg. man. Put two hands on it. Just one. Big chemo with terrible balance there. Look at that. Just lifts up one leg and just rotates him. Big chemo with the letdown. Come on, Kimo, get it together. Trying to psych himself back into this. My, my cousin's we birthday is on the 26th of Feb. Of Can I say a happy summer. birthday and call him a cheeky monkey? What's his name? Alex. Alex, you cheeky monkey. Hold on, I'll come back to that in a second. Round two, let's go. See more big Kimo. Kimo looking to get heavy on the head. Oh, he's, and oh. he snaps him down. Nice that was good. That was good. I thought big Kimo was going to get thrown out and he just snapped him down. Snap down is a wrestling move. That was a snap. That was the biggest snap Mama I've ever seen. Forward, face plant. But he's keeping his head Your low battle. a little bit. Boom. Almost knocked him out with the face, with the snap down. Third and final. Snap down City. Uh, keeping your head down will get you... Tony Ferguson. We saw done here by Big Chemo. And a great tactical adjustment by Big Chemo. Right. Using Kamal's... Big Chemo with the snap down. With the Tony Ferguson. Alex, happy birthday, mate, you cheeky monkey. Hope you have a good one. Alex... Your birthday is on the 26th of February. My birthday is on the 28th of February. How old do you think I am? 32? 
Oh, man alive, should get oiled up. All right, this is the final, final match. The one apiece, the snap down, the single leg. 1-1 one, one apiece. Here we go. Third place up for grabs. Come on, goes low. Basira grabbing the overhooks, trying to get the Mawashi, getting on to it, Madison. Yeah, Camille, uh, Big Kimo's got one over, one Too under. Too big. He's he done it! it. Big Kimo nice. locks job. up third place after a close brawl with the dark horse, Muhammad Kamal. Hold on one second. Great job Let's by Big Kimo. Off. He's able to get that one, one over, one under hook. Both grips on the Mawashi. Walked him to the edge. Actually, one grip on the Mawashi. Walked him to the edge and just kind of hipped into him to, to get that final push out. I love how he got deep on, on that under hook. And just Big Kimo getting right? the job so done. Important. To Snap down. where it takes place. We send it to Jazz. That was so that oh. Ladies and gentlemen, your third place winner, Kamal. He won by wedges. Zero. Big Kimo. Big Kimo with the win. It Congratulations. It may not be first place. Third place for Kimo. Nice job. Um, Michael, what is your advice for a kid that wants to become a UFC champion? How do you think Big Kimo does against Yang Wei Li? Um... Big Kimo doesn't look like much of a boxer. Oh, you mean Zhang Wei? So I was thinking of Zhe Li Zhang, the Chinese boxer. Zhang Wei Li. Oh, God. I mean, there's weight classes for a reason, isn't there? You know, Zhang Wei Li's phenomenal. She's an incredible fighter. I think she might have a work cut out with a 370 pound big Kimo. Just being honest. Nothing against Zhang Wei Li. Courageous, valiant effort on your part against big Kimo. I know that you wanted to say something to the crowd and Hold to the on, fans we'll that are to watching the around the world. I want to thank everybody who come here to support us, everybody who's watching from home. Maybe I didn't get the win, but I still the most dangerous one. Thank you. Thank you, Dark Horse. Give it up for the Dark Horse, everybody. All right. Big now Kimo Big coming in. It's his moment with Kara Castronova. Milking it. I'm here with your third place winner, Big Kimo. Big Kimo, you showed tremendous heart, tremendous courage and bravery, and you were victorious in the third round. He what snapped him do you down. have to say to the fans watching around the world and everybody here in the stadium that is chanting Big Kimo? I got much love. You can't imagine, guys, how grateful I am to hear everybody announcing my name. It means a lot to me. That's especially. Nice. I'm here. Hold on, guys. Hold on. I'm here in the U.S. without my family. My entire family lives in Egypt. So no. from here, I'm telling my dad, I'm my mom in the heaven. No worries. I have a no. great family here in the U.S. Bless. I have a great family here in the U.S. I like this guy. For real, guys. For real. For real. Because he, he looks young as well. For real, he guys. Only looks love, young. love and respect. Respect. Kimo, a little less of a serious question. What are you going to eat tonight to celebrate your third place victory? The whole restaurant. Uh, I'm thinking about like 20 pieces. The whole bloody restaurant. So. Like something like that. I want to celebrate. I want to feel like I'm celebrating. I want to get naked and keep eating till I sleep. Hey, fair play to him, man. That's amazing. What an amazing Give it up for your what third a story. Place winner. You know what I mean? Like, you sit here and you're having a laugh and all the rest of it. But this is a big deal for these people. There's a lot of uh, people in the audience. Let's have another listen. I like chemo. One last thing. One more time again for everybody here tonight and watching us behind the TV and the phone screen. I end you a lot of respect and a lot of love. Without you guys, we can't be here today. And thank you for Mr. Noah Goldman, the head boss of the Federation. And one more time, Stephen Gadd, my coach, and I promised my dad today, I'm going back with a trophy. So dad, I'm taking the trophy back home with me. I keep my word. Nice. I kept my word, dad. I am taking the trophy back nice. with me home. Give. And then last thing, last thing guys. First place I in our like hearts. I would like to say all my fans in Egypt, and my dad and my family, I would like to say something in my own language. Ehna tarikh. We are making history a victory all the way from the U.S. to Egypt. Amazing moment Good from for Big him. Kimo as he captures. 
How can you not like Big Chemo? What a sweetheart, bless him. He's all emotional. Said his mother, obviously she's passed, his father's watching at home, all his family's at home. Look at that, that's incredible. Makes all the way to America, New Jersey, Newark, I believe it is. Here's the final. And he got the he got the gold medal. Uh, sorry, the bronze medal. So congratulations. Chemo is first or third. Don't know what that means. Super Nintendo Chalmers, is this guy ever gonna shut up? Bro, he's right. He said, listen. If it wasn't for the fans, and he's absolutely right. You know, it's like if, with the UFC. If there's no fans, there's no interest. There's no sport. There's no living. There's no career. There's no doing it. You know what I mean? That's why I always try and stop and give as much time as I can to people that, you know, support what I do or support what the UFC does, you know. So, yeah. Anyway, now we've got the, uh, we've got the final. Toyo Thomas. All right, we'll uh, we'll go to we'll have a bit of audio on the final in a minute. When will we ever see Bisping in there? I'll have a go. I don't think I do very well though. I'm a little bit outsized. Uh, literally, the meme of the guy cracking the champagne while on the third place podium. All right, I don't know what that means. You doing this stream as an example? No. Am I hungover? No, I'm not. I feel a bit shit though. We're all a bit sick in our house. Rebecca's really sick. She is sick as a dog. Uh, and yeah, I don't feel good. I've had a headache. Took a lot of par uh, ibuprofen all day long. That's why I'm drinking electrolytes and stuff like that. I just feel like shit. I have, I have done all week, to be honest, from Wednesday. I woke up on Wednesday and my throat was killing. I was really worried about commentating. So I went to see a doctor to get some medication and stuff because I thought, I can't lose my voice. I'm commentating a bloody pay-per-view for crying out loud. I'm going to lose my voice. Oh, God, it'd be a nightmare. So I was all paranoid about that. Um, so, yeah. Um, I second two more rematches of MMA legends. That'd be good. That'd be cool. That's disrespectful, Green Thumb. Um, okay, here's the final. Are you watching the NBA All-Star game? I didn't even know there was one happening. I would I do enjoy basketball. I'm enjoying this sumo, though. Let's have a listen. Further in the history books, Madison, it's Asuna Arashi. It's the sandstorm. There's a lot of people there. The bad guy of world championship sumo. I mean, this guy is known for slapping faces and, and taking names. I'm excited to see this finals match. It seemed inevitable, but it's Skaglov and Arashi in the finals. Health is wealth. Stay balanced. You're absolutely right, buddy. As I get older, that's something that I'm so conscious of these days. And I, I, I look after myself pretty good. I know I have this reputation of you know being a big drinker and stuff. I like a little drink, but I'm not a big drinker. I have my moments, but generally, I don't drink a lot these days. I really don't. Uh, and even when I do drink, it's like one or two. You know what I mean? Two or three. You know the world I mean? on I'm not a... I don't go out and get drunk. Or uh, or anything like that. That, that. That's the old me. I'm very boring these days. I sit here watching sumo, talking to complete strangers. In fact, I'm not talking to strangers. I'm talking to my bloody self. Six beers a day keeps the doctors away. Now, well, give you a bloody sore head in the morning, mate. Um, hi, greetings from Swansea. Bisping, thanks for taking the time to cover this, my fan way. You must have been a fan of Vauban Elliott last night. Terrible Welsh accent. My brother lives near Swansea. My brother Comrade. All right, so this is the final. I'm actually quite interested in this. Is this sumo in Japan? No, it's actually in Newark, New Jersey, my friend. All right. Get 309, this. even in ready pounds, out of Monsuro, Egypt. Our club sumo two champion. Egypt. Presenting the great sandstorm Osuna Arashi Saslan Gaglio Your third man in the doyo Your Gioji, Ronnie Alman. Third man in, Ronnie Alman getting the pop of the night here at the Prudential Center. They are on their feet okay. for our finals matchup, Madison. I just looked at the live chat on Triller TV and somebody said to let Ronnie know how popular he is because they don't <laughs> think he understands. And I don't either. This crowd is going nuts for referee Ronnie Allman. And they should be going nuts for these two champions right here. They are locked in and ready 
to I, put on Marco a spectacle. Marco Hernandez will come back to that in a second, buddy. A rematch buddy. of Club Sumo 1, Arashi. All right, it's a rematch. Gaglov. The big Plus final. 130. Both wrestlers coming out here very traditional with their openings, and I love that a lot. I love keeping tradition in Egypt. the dojo because we don't want it to get lost. You know, we Versus still want to respect traditional America. sumo, and it's history. Very I'm surprised we're not having chance of USA. USA. Up in the stance. Rashi, they clash oh, oh, oh. oh. Ronnie Almond. Oh, a little push there from Safan. It's getting heated. Bad blood brewed between these two. What happened? Over the course of he started several a bit early. events. Gagla oh, points it out. He wants to go. Oh, he's ready. Get down. I am too. Oh, get my down. gosh. This is getting intense. Almond trying to contain the action. Gagloff fired up. Ooh. Big jump from Gagloff. Oh, but he's he tried. Oh, wow. Nice job. Oh, no. He lands on the concrete, though. That's not nice. Big Bear is Remember, grounded. Osuna Arashi. This guy's the guy that dashed. That's the first battle. It pushed looked that like other guy out on his side was going again for that matador, but Osuna Gagliov was, was tried to jump over it. it. As Let's you have can a see. look. Here's the replay, Madison. Walk me through it. Yep. Oh. Saslan tries to go for the matador, but Osuna was hip to it, stayed low, and was able to get that underhook and use battle it to drive winner, him out. The, the edge. great sandstorm. Again, if they were on a raised sumo thing, Matt. How Imagine his the, the drama is throwing them off onto some sure. padding stuff, obviously, so they don't get hurt. Yeah, and he was wincing great. a bit, so I'm sure he's feeling a bit pain from falling on straight up concrete. Um, but let's see if it affects him in this next round. Osuna right. doesn't look like he has a scratch on him except the one on his neck. It could all come down to this in the sold out. Touching Todd, that is disgusting. Arashi, Gaglov, once again. All right, here we go, the big final. Almond. Monitoring the action, supervising the sumo athletes. Look at the focus that Ronnie Almond's got. And the stare down coming from Osuna. Eyes at the top of his head. Gagloff lining up just off the mark. Gagloff's Quick ready. Down. Arashi and then go. Collision. Gagloff's got the Mawashi, but Arashi trying to keep the stance. Oh, Sandstorm almost pushed backwards out the Toyo Madison. Gagloff trying to hip in. Both have grips on the Mawashi. Both are doing a good job of controlling the center. Looks like Osuna has a bit better of head positioning. See if this will fare well for him. But Sasan trying to get head positioning himself, digging his forehead in there. Both Gagloff. have an overhook and an underhook. Gagloff is gassing. He has tried several attempts. There's a third. The Sandstorm denying all of them. But the Doyo is getting smaller for Arashi. This is a long match. Sasan is having I'm trying to not talk over the commentary. The edge, but they not know enough what they're to talking get him about. over. Osuna's doing a good job of staying heavy in his stance. Oh. Oh, almost got him. So close, close, close. Arashi's close. been here before. He's deadly on the Doyo. Sasan Gagloff has hacked. He's got to watch out. One more burst of energy for Sasan, and he can get it. Tried to pick but him he's up. just not strong enough to hip into Osuna right at the edge. Osuna doing a yeah. great job of having heavy hips here. Defensive player of the year for Osuna Rashi. Gagloff Ooh, trying his best. He gets, he gets it. it. The big bear still alive in the Sandstorm Arena. Sandstorm one, sucking one. air. That gas tank is starting to wither. Both wow. guys are going to have to pick it up and get ready for one more finals match. They should make it best out of five in the final. You know what I mean? But that was a close matchup, but no wonder they're tired. And it's, wrestling is so hard, and, and this is sumo, but it's still the same kind of thing. You're still trying to throw another human being around. Anyway, let's do some super chats real quick, uh, or some uh, some some questions. Hi, Bisping, coming to Tasmania, Australia, you crab. Okay. Um, my wife has some family there. Uh, Tasmania. Hold on, the back on, the back on. No rest for the wicked. Yeah. The big final. How the big final. Saslon Gagliov. We extend to the third and final battle between Arashi and Gaglov. Madison, one has got to wonder what these guys' gas tanks look like right now. Oh, man, they're withering. Both of them are covered in sweat. Both of them are sucking air, and they're both very tired. I mean, they have been through match after match after match. They had the qualifying round. They had the yeah. quarterfinals, the semifinals, and now they're here for their fourth match of the night. Each match having two to three rounds each one. So these are not long easy day. matches. These are tiring matches. And these guys have been through a lot tonight. So this is one more bout, and this is determining who's getting all the marbles. Egypt. Right, here we go. 
Russia. Arashi versus Gaglov. All of the marbles here in the sold out Prudential Center. One of them has got to win. This is getting intense. Arashi lined up so close to the mark. Gaglov. Good Vintage. idea. Best of five in the final. Back exactly. Back. No FC. Both guys are just staring into each other's souls. Humans will compete at anything. Osuna with a little bit more um, competitive spirit. It's good for the soul. <laughs> there are daggers inside a Rashi's starts. Borneos. That's a five-yard penalty. But the big bear. Slapping the belt. Slapping the Mawashi. Letting them know who's the bear. <laughs> I love it. For all they the marbles. violence. There's the uppercuts from Gaglov. <laughs> I expect some striking. This is awesome. Strike. Uh, yeah, I think you can slap Down. to the face a little bit. Orashi! Two big boys. Third and final battle on the Mawashi. Orashi has the Doyo position, but Gaglov hipping into him. Both have a good over under hook on the Mawashi. Looks like uh, Sasson's trying to use an outside Ooh. trick. Oh! Right. oh. The Sandstorm! Uses it against him, turns it into an inside trip. Perfect defense to an outside trip, and this is why outside trips are so risky. Congratulations, Sosuna. That was I a see the great replay. defense to an outside trip. Sometimes you go big, but you He's also go beast, home. Him. Sandstorm, Osuna, Arashi. Just impeccable defense. Madison Gwynn, take me through the replay. As you can so see, Sasson going for that, that outside, outside yeah, trip. But, but when you go for the outside trip, the you give up the hips and you put yourself on one foot. And so... Look at the momentum, though. He rolled him over. He kind of counted him. If they were in the UFC, Gagliov would have ended up on top. I guess it's whoever hits the canvas or the ground first. But you know what I'm saying? It was it was it was uh, Orashi that went out of the uh, the area, so to speak. So anyway, well, well, that was fun. That that was a good good matchup for the final. Um, Championship. We'll we'll listen to the interviews in a minute. Ian Gary Barlow is at the eye gauge eye gouge match. Bispin DC did well with that role. What are you talking about? First person to touch the mat. Yeah, thank you. No, I gathered that. I gathered that. First person to touch the mat. Well, that's that. That's another episode of World Championship Sumo. I'm pretty starving now. Dinner, Sunday night. Oh, this is nice. All the competitors, nothing but love and respect. On Big Chemo with the bedazzled World Championship <laughs> Sumo. That is fly. Third champ. I like, I like the Egyptian me, guy. Place. Him right there. Four. Come on, Pussera. Good He won the Big hearts Kima. and minds of everybody. He's just got a friendly face, hasn't he? Look at that guy. He's a fan favorite. Everyone loves him. Like, that's my guy. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the smiles. Runner-up winner, Big you can Bear. Charm anybody. Like Gagliov, don't get me wrong. He hasn't got the same star power, has he? I mean, he looks like he likes a beer. But just not enough. Nice guy, I'm sure. And your world championship sumo champion, the great. Sandstorm! Sandstorm. Osuna! Arashi. Look at third place! Yeah, the God ultimate bless him. Congratulations. Of the is awarded That's it. Third place. You raised that trophy. Arashi, Get it up there. Go on. Sumo wrestlers. Look at the we smile on third place. He's so happy. Yeah, That's congratulations. amazing. As we said before, Club <laughs> Sumo won. Uh, it was Osuna Arashi versus like that, that he, in the final. He's going to hold on to that win, trophy a, for the rest of his life. That's his prized possession. He can't wait to take it home to his back dad. To back that big win smile, man. For World Championship Sumo. Congratulations to both. And you know what? Listen, it's, it's sumo wrestling, which obviously is something that they've worked on, they've trained for. But competing in anything in front of that amount of people has some buzz. It is. That's why fighters struggle to retire. You know, look at that. Look at the, imagine the atmosphere and the energy and all the rest of it. He's so proud of himself. Let's have a listen to the interview. Champion sumo champion Asuna the Sandstorm Arashi. Didn't even see her. You made history tonight, Hold Sandstorm. Hold on, Marcos. How does it feel? It feels great. It feels really, really good. It has been a big honor, guys, to fight here tonight at the Prudential Center in front of all these people. Prudential. Really, thank you so much for coming today. Thanks to everybody for watching us. He seems like a TV. nice guy. Thanks for everybody in the U.S. and the Arab world. Whoever is watching us, thank you guys. You made this show, not us. It's you. Thank you so much, guys. 
What's in the I like future for the Sandstorm? Sandstorm is with the champion. The future is going to be the champion as well. It's my place, my home, my time. It's also not Ashi. Thank you. Everybody the give it up for the World Championship Sumo One Championship. Asuna Arashi, the great sandstorm. You heard it from the champ. It's his place. It's his home. He belongs there. And Madison nice. wins more frequently than not. He is there. <clears throat> yeah, best two out of three so far. Uh, well, with well done Osuna getting to the sandstorm. The Congratulations. He seems like a nice guy as well. So Marcos Hernandez uh, says here, Bispin, my last message was about giving my friend Joseph advice about dealing with a big B-word supervisor since you're watching Sumo. Big B-word supervisor. What are you saying? So he's got a boss who's a bit of a bitch. Is that what you're saying? And how does Joseph deal with that? I don't know, mate. It's hard because I don't know anything about the situation. If I knew a little bit, if you give me a bit of context, I could maybe give you some advice. But not knowing anything and not having any context whatsoever, it's almost impossible. But, I, I, no, I'll tell you what. I can give you some advice. Um, so it's a new job. The woman's the supervisor. Sounds like she's being a big B, right? Is it worth it? Is the job worth it? If it is, find a way to pursue it and, and, and figure it out and, and block it out, right? But if it's not worth it, if it's not a job that's going to go anywhere, if it's not a lifelong dream, if it doesn't pay well, then do something else. Because if she's making your life miserable on a daily basis, it's not, it ain't worth it, buddy. But if it is your dream job, and it's something that you've worked hard for and, and, and you want to do this, then, then maybe go speak to the person and figure it out. I don't know, but good luck. Uh, have I ever fought in Japan? I haven't, Skylar, and I've never been to Japan, and it breaks my heart to say that because I want to go to Japan. I'm, I'm a massive fan of a lot of things Japanese, and I'm a, I started off studying Japanese jiu-jitsu when I was a little kid, so I've always had like a, an obsession. I say an obsession, that's a strong word, but I've always, always had a, a fondness for things Japanese. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go. Thank you all for watching. That's the end of the show. World Championship, sumo, you know. I got the flow. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Well done to all those sumo competitors. That is good advice. Thank you, Amberly Rose. It is, isn't it? Figure it out. If you need to be there, figure it out. If not, it ain't worth it for your mental health. That's a word that gets thrown around a lot, but it's true. If she's making your life miserable, move on. If it's just a... You know, if it's just like a crappy job, there's a lot of crappy jobs out there where you're not going to have to deal with somebody that's going to make you miserable. Your mic, in your opinion, what is the most compelling fight you could put together? Makajev versus Edwards, Taporia versus O'Malley. I'd like to see Makachev versus Edwards. Yeah, I'd like to see that. True leave. What a guy. Cheers, Mikey B. Great stream. Thank you. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Just quit. Quit as always. <laughs> well, you're right. I understand what you're saying there, buddy. Just quit. Quit as always, win. Uh, well, yeah, if you're trying to stop smoking. Um, again, it's different, isn't it? It's different. Thoughts on Tapori getting coached by... I don't know. You guys are trying to make me say something bad. Love from Brazil and love right back to you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you're well. I'll be doing another live this week, probably, about mixed martial arts. Uh, and I'll probably start getting some guests on. What do you think about that? Probably not a bad idea. Anyway, I'm done. Well done to everyone competing at the sumo. And thank you all for being here. And